What's up guys, I'm Chill Pill and welcome back to another episode of Black Sheep Reviews. If you couldn't tell from the festive headgear, I'm celebrating yet another triumphant trip around the sun this month. That's great and everything, but since all my friends either live too far away or have other stuff planned, looks like I'm celebrating this B-Day solo a mano. Yay adulthood! Well, now that I've sufficiently depressed myself, I really don't feel like doing a review, so guess I'll just go stuff my face with whatever I can find in the kitchen. So that's it. Bye bye. Ooh, pretzels. You'll never disappoint me. Stale. You disappoint me. Hello. 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 Hello, Shovel Knight Amiibo. How can I help you? I notice thou seemed a bit glum reviewer of the black sheep, so I have brought a gift. Reach deep into my bag of wonders. Oh, hey, thanks, man. <laughs> you know, it's been about a minute since I last played your game. So willst thou review the game, my young sheeply squire? Absolutely. I would love to. I mean, I'm already dressed for it, so... Does this mean we're friends? That depends. May I partake in thine bag of salted knot bread? No. My pretzels. I'll start the review. First things first, I'll be covering the original Shovel Knight campaign for this review, also known as the Shovel of Hope. Anywho, developed by the good people at Yacht Club Games, Shovel Knight was first released back in June of 2014, a little over a year after its resoundingly successful Kickstarter campaign had concluded, and has only grown in popularity since then. The story follows a most unconventional knight, who chooses to wield a gardening tool rather than a sword and shield, and his harrowing journey to rescue his beloved shield knight from the clutches of the evil enchantress. While on his way to slay the Maleficent wannabe, Shovel Knight is constantly being impeded by the enchantress nefarious boy band, the Order of No Quarter. Well, geez, if Treasure Knight would just quit hogging them all, the group could probably change their name. Just a thought. You gotta love the attention to detail that went into each of these knights' respective theme stages, but my favorite level isn't even technically required to beat the game. In what is probably the most creative way I've seen a kickstarted game incorporate its donors, the Hall of Champions is a standalone stage that has you ghost-busting your way through the level as the portraits of game patrons stare at you all along the way, and some of them seem a tad grumpier than others. On his journey through this strange land, Shovel Knight runs into a slew of seemingly stranger allies. From a sarcastic goth that operates a hidden minigame, to a puntastic frog, you, I like you, to my personal favorite, the Trowpel King, a gigantic fish that likes to dance around with his buddies and then hocks a magical loogie called Ikor into your chalice. Dude, you just ruined my coke. You guys are in for a real treat. I'm going to share with you my old family recipe of the Icor of Fortune. All you need is some Red Bull and some Swedish fish. Let's get started. And now the final secret ingredient. Stir with a magnet. Bon Appetit. I guess it doesn't really work. Oh God! Who? Kansas! I think the best character interactions come from Shovel Knight's rival, Black Knight. Or, as I like to call him, The Dark Knight. The love triangle dynamic between him, Shovel Knight, and Shield Knight makes for some of the best character development in the game and gives a neat little side plot to the overall story. 
In keeping with the classic NES storytelling style, all character interactions and plot are told through still frames and scrawling text boxes, complete with beeps and boops in various pitches to denote which characters are talking. And while some might argue the delivery is boring and dated, I feel like it succeeds in telling the story in a very succinct, complete way. Definitely no plot holes with this game. Sit tight, boys and girls. Still got plenty of shovel puns left. All of the characters and levels in Shovel Knight are designed in the classic 8-bit style, and let me tell you, much like our hero Shiny Metal Keister, these graphics are nice and polished. This game's visually stunning pixel art looks like what would happen if you were to take an old-school Nintendo game and just slather a coat of HD paint all over it. Due to the graphical restrictions on early consoles, game devs had to color their sprites with a very limited palette and reuse various assets to fit everything on one cartridge, which would make the visuals feel kinda samey after a while, but that's not the case with Shovel Knight. The innovative stage designs and absolute explosion of color, quite literally in Plague Knight's case, gave a creative flair to every last level and made Shovel Knight one of the most visually stunning 8-bit worlds I've seen to date. Not to mention the characters that populate this pretty pixelated game have an amazing level of detail to them as well. The wide variety of characters in Shovel Knight is staggering, but what's really impressive is just how meticulous the devs were with designing and animating so many different sprites. The Order of No Quarter are a great example. Every single one of the villainous knights have a look that complements their level's theme, like the Robot Masters in the Mega Man series, and each has a unique badass moveset that shows off just how well animated the game can be, from Treasure Knight's anchor shot, to Propeller Knight showing off his mad fencing skills, to Mole Knight bursting through every wall like he was the gosh dang Kool-Aid guy. Oh yeah! Heck, even the standard enemies had fun designs, from the skeletons that had a bad habit of losing their heads over every little thing, to the jumping flame boogers, to various weaponized rats. Did that one just explode? That gives me an awesome idea. <laughs> I have the girl's water, a few drops of pure explosium, and now we're gonna have us some kick-ass exploding rats. Perfect. Aw, you giving the girls some water? Why is that green? It's water. Water's not green. It's algae water. Why are you giving them algae? Because you asked too many questions. No, what did you put in there? Nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. What did you do? Nothing! What did Whoa. What's the government putting in our water these days? <laughs> Then there's our hero clad in blue armor. Much like Mario is the face of Nintendo, Shovel Knight might just be one of the most iconic indie game characters on the market, and boy, does this little metal man have some slick moves. Or metal woman. Game devs give you that option as well. One thing is for sure, this has got to be the most goofy looking ducking animation I've ever seen. Shovel Knight, how you gonna look cool saving Shield Knight when you look like you're trying to pick a wedgie without using your hands? These are some tasty chip tunes. Who composed music for this game? Let's see. Who? It's my boy Jake Kaufman. If you watch my Shantae Let Half Genie you Hero review, you'll know that this dude has got some mad musical chops when it comes to video game soundtracks. You would think composing completely in chip tunes might end up making the music an overall flatter experience, but Jake is not one to simply throw in the trowel when it comes to composition. Just like with the game's art, the 8-bit sounds get a nice up-res into HD, which gives the music and sound effects an overall crisper quality that, yet again, differentiates Shovel Knight from its retro counterparts. And what better way to exemplify my point than by kicking down the door with the game's awesome intro song? Every level's theme is just so robust and memorable. But what's cooler is that when you're taking on the boss, a more frantic version of the level's music plays, and it's absolutely peppered with motifs heard throughout the stage's theme. The game's soundtrack also utilizes a variety of musical stylings to spice things up, such as the tarantella that plays when you encounter this half-woman, half-broccoli creature.
and who could forget the adorable Trumple Waltz? As a bonus, Mega Man composer Monami Matsume also contributed a couple of songs to the game's soundtrack, including my personal favorite, the Explodatorium theme. Ooh, this game just sounds so gosh dang amazing. All I can say is, Jake and Monami, my friends, you did good. Shovel Knight may look and sound great, but how does it play? To give you an idea, ever play Mega Man? It's kind of like that. Ever play DuckTales? It's kind of like that. Ever had to dig a hole? It's kind of like that. But fun! It's obvious that Shovel Knight's gameplay mechanics are heavily inspired by some of the most popular NES titles of all time, but the way that Yacht Club was able to organically blend these various games together is what makes their project much more than just a cheap imitation. At its core, Shovel Knight is an extremely tight platformer that has you wandering through a multitude of different stages, killing a bunch of baddies, collecting tons of loot, and taking on a boss at the end. But the real fun comes in when you see just how varied the gameplay gets from level to level. One stage will have you scooching along slowly to make blocks appear out of nowhere, another will have you knock snow onto spikes to avoid a pointy death, and another will have you bouncing on the back of a big ol' jello beetle. Not to mention how you choose to play adds a whole other layer to the fun cake. You can always play with nothing but your trusty shovel by your side, pogo jumping on every last blob, bubble, and boss along the way, or you can use the relics hidden away in every stage to take the game on in style. Heck, you can even run over munchkins with a unicycle if that's your thing. Oh wow, looks like someone's gotten overcompensation down to a science. Now you don't have to use all the relics to beat the game. They're just meant to change up gameplay, keep things interesting, and save your butt from time to time. Propeller dagger for the win. And don't go thinking you gotta go on this arduous adventure alone. Several NPCs are available to offer you their aid if you need it. But good help ain't free. Giving a meal ticket to Chef Hippie increases your life bar. Paying Professor Wizard increases your magic, and later on you'll run into a couple of helpful blacksmiths chilling up in a blimp. Because what better place to forge weapons and armor than in a highly combustible balloon? Nothing bad can possibly come from this. If you throw some of your hard-earned gems their way, you can power up your shovel or get some new stylish armor that will grant you certain perks. I mostly use the dynamo armor for two reasons. One, the powered up shovel swing made fighting enemies so much easier, and two, Silver is cool. Duh. But I will admit that I thoroughly enjoyed prancing around in the gold armor quite a bit, because if I have to save Shield Knight, I'm going to do so as fabulously as possible, dammit. Some serious props should be given to the crew at Yacht Club Games. Not every game can go from being a relatively unknown Kickstarter project to one of the most resoundingly successful indie titles of all time. Shovel Knight absolutely knocks it out of the park with its retro aesthetic and smooth gameplay. It could honestly even stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mario and Sonic for the title of Best Platformer. But I think what makes the game so awesome is how the devs blend together their inspirations from games released throughout the past few decades. You have the pogo jump from DuckTales, the world map from Mario 3, the boss rush from Mega Man, the wall chicken from Castlevania, the town from Zelda 2, the bonfires from Dark Souls, and even character designs inspired by Kingdom Hearts and Bioshock. It's pretty much a greatest hits collection. And talk about extra content and replayability. After you finish the Shovel of Hope campaign, you can play through again on New Game Plus with all the treasure you previously acquired for a harder challenge and to check off everything on that long list of achievements, or you can play the Plague of Shadows and Spectre of Torment campaigns which are pretty much standalone games on their own, complete with new stories and unique gameplay mechanics. Not to mention there are some super secret badass boss fights if you know where to find them. Also, physical copies of the game came with an honest to god instruction book. Remember these things? Not to sound old, but I remember a time when these things came standard with games, so that was a cool little bonus. I guess you could say Shovel Knight delivers fun in spades. It's currently available on every major console, including the Nintendo Switch, so you don't really have a good reason not to play it. So go on, do it! Answer that call to Shovelry today! 
Shovel Knight is the perfect culmination of new and old school, and by that I mean the game seamlessly combines 8-bit era nostalgia with smooth modern day gameplay mechanics in a way that just appeals to both young and old gamers alike. There's just so much here to enjoy, from the beautifully designed pixel art, to the stunning chiptune soundtrack, to the hours upon hours of stellar additional content. Shovel Knight just sets that bar for other indie games to reach so high. That's why this game gets my rating of... Golden Fleece! You could say I really dig this game. I'll stop. And with that, I'm Chillville reminding you, if you adopt a dog, be sure to pee on all the furniture before you bring him home so he knows who's boss. Later! Hello! Tis I, Shovel Knight! Didst thou enjoy this most glorious of reviews on my game? Don't forget to leave a like and comment on this video and subscribe to the channel for more sheepy goodness! Question for thee, dost thou enjoy new games that are designed to look retro? Let us know in the comments below and we shall see thou next time!